All right, class, first off, as always, good day. I'm glad you're here. So, um, this video is basically the uh, second part of what happened with uh, Prussia. So, if you forgot what happened, I suggest you just go back to the, the previous video and um, watch that real quick. All right, now, here's your warm up question. Uh, as you see, there's your picture right there. So, what do you see? Right, make your list of things you see. Okay. Also, the second question is, what do you think is going on? All right. So each person, as you see there, um, represents a country. All right. Now look at what they're reaching for, things like that. But most importantly, look at the person who has their back to you. Look what country they're from. And the second question um, is like basically. What do you think is going on here? And why do you think this person has their back uh, to you? Why do you think they're not reaching like the other people are? All right, so what do you think? So be sure you write that down on the uh, second question. And once you finish that, then you're ready for the notes. And those are coming up right now. All right. So we were talking about before um, the prime minister of Prussia. His last name was Bismarck. Now, the thing was, um, Bismarck was a unique man. And what I mean by that is, like, a great example is a lot of presidents and a lot of prime ministers have a foreign policy, which is usually like, let's keep the peace, you know, we'll attack you if you attack us, you know, <clears throat> or, uh, hey, you know, you stay on your side, we'll stay on our side. You know, we'll help you out if you help us out. Things like that. His foreign policy was, we're going to declare war on you. That was it. Let's go to war. Okay. So, that is not really much of a foreign policy, but that was his. All right. Um, in 1864, um, Prussia defeated Denmark and Austria. Now, remember, Austria fought against Russia. Uh, when Russia was going against uh, the Ottoman Empire and Austria and Russia were friends but because uh, Austria fought Russia they lost their best friend and that now they're by themselves <clears throat> so the thing is Prussia won some territory now just two years later which is in the history of time it's not that long okay and think of it like this if someone got in a fight and then like the next day they're like ready for round two especially if they got beat you'd be like what is wrong with you that's basically what happened okay austria barely recovering and they want round two so they declare war june 14th 1866 prussia's like okay let's do this and the war ends less than a month later on july 3rd all right so it was really wasn't much of a fight excuse me now prussia they actually got the northern Ger uh, german uh, states to join them okay now the southern states were kind of hesitant because the thing is uh, prussia they were protestant and the southern states of germany were catholic now, nowadays, that doesn't seem like a big thing, like, woof, woof, who cares? But back then, religion was, like, everything, you know? So, for someone to say, I'm a Catholic, and if we join this group, they're going to force us to be Protestant, that was, in a sense, kind of like slapping God in the face, you know, from your religion's um, perspective. And that was kind of a big no-no, all right? Now, again, like I said, nowadays, more people are relaxed when it comes to religion, but um back then no 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 religion was huge it was like everything okay um but the problem was the southern german states um they didn't get along with france and they were actually kind of scared of them so it was either join prussia or be attacked by the french all right so they had a choice to make all right, so in 1870, 
France and Prussia, they begin arguing over the, the legitimacy of the relationship between the King of Prussia. Because the thing is, he was supposedly the next person in line to be the King of Spain. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, well, how can you be a king of this country and also this one? Because back then, what they did was, like, the king of this one country would have his son marry the daughter of the king of this country. And then when they had kids, and their kid would be the king of this country and this country. And they could, like, bring them together and then become a big kingdom and things like that. Um, the problem is, sometimes when they did this, another son or daughter would be over here. And then their this group, like this group, and it's just like a web of just messes, okay? And um, that's the thing. The legitimacy of, oh, the king of Prussia is going to be, is the next king of Spain, was challenged uh, by France. Now, the thing is, Bismarck was an instigator. And I'm sure you may know what that word means. If you don't, pause this video, look it up really quick, okay? And the thing is, he just loved it really just teased the French, just kept poking the bear type of thing, and um, what happened, it got to the point where France was just ticked off, and they said, you know, we're going to declare war on you, and that was on July 13th, 1870, all right, France is thinking, we're going to go in there, we're going to beat Prussia, quite the opposite, France got their butt kicked, um, Prussia actually advanced into France twice, you know, and the thing is, on September 2nd, 1870, at Sedan, um, Prussia basically captured the entire French army. And not only did they catch the entire army, they also caught the, <clears throat> excuse me, the ruler, Napoleon III. <clears throat> Sorry. All right, I do apologize for that. Um, but yeah, they caught the ruler, Napoleon III. Now, it's one thing to catch a platoon or maybe a company of soldiers, but it's another thing to capture, like, the entire army. And that's what Prussia did. And basically, they were sending word back to Paris saying, hey, we got your boys. You know, um, so you got any other soldiers or do we just come in there and take over you? What's up? So... The uh, committees in Paris basically agreed, you know what, we need to surrender. So on January 28th, 1871, that's what they did. And they basically had to pay back 5 billion francs and give up uh, several territories. Because again, in war, the winning side keeps the land they basically um, took over. All right? It's written on the agreements, things like that. So, yeah. The thing is, France was not going to take this lightly. They did not want to just fall back and just, like, accept it. Um, so they vowed revenge. Now, when they got revenge, that's another story. Now, my question to you is this. What do you think France is going to do to get revenge? How will they get revenge? Will they invade? Will they try to hurt the, uh, the Germany economically? Um, what, what would they do? What do you think they could do? All right. And uh, do you think they'll get it now or later? You know, so there, <clears throat> excuse me again, there's a writing prompt on the bottom. I think France will get revenge by how you tell me. What do you think? And the second one is, I think they will get revenge in how many years or months or days or whatever? Because so why do you think you give why are you giving them that much time? You know? to formulate a plan, to execute it, and things like that. So why are you giving them that much time? Okay, again, it's what you think. It's an educated guess. So just tell me what you think. All right, so on January 18th, uh, 1871, Bismarck and 600 German princes, nobles, and generals all met at the Hall of Mirrors in Versailles. Now, this picture, you see, just, that's the actual Hall of Mirrors, you know, uh, in Versailles. As you can see, it's beautiful. It's decked out in gold and everything, you know, um, painting on the roofs. I mean, it's beautiful. 
Now, William I of Prussia was then proclaimed Kaiser of the Second German Empire. Now, I'm sure you're probably thinking, well, what was a first? Well, we kind of had to skip over it in the last semester, um, but basically uh, the Holy Roman Empire was the first uh, German uh, Empire, but that was during the medieval times. Okay. Now, Prussia's monarchy and army basically achieved the German unity. Um, they brought everyone together, and just like I said at the very beginning, um, Prussia had to be the one to get everyone together. It's one thing to say, hey, let's do, let's get together, let's, let's be united. But it's another thing to get the strongest, most important person to join in too. You know, they basically have to want to. You can't make them, all right? Now, with this industry, you know, these new factories and some of that, uh, new more resources and their military strength, Germany became the strongest power in the European continent at that time. All right, they were huge. All right, basically rivaling um, Britain. Now, Britain was the biggest, baddest, you know, but now here comes Germany. Now, speak, speaking of Britain, um, Britain, remember I told you, like France, we talked about the revolution, right? Britain was so close to having a revolution themselves, you know, but they avoided it several times. Uh, first time was like in 1832. Basically, they said, hey, you know what, we'll allow more men to vote, right? Before it used to be, if you were noble, then it became more like, if you... Uh, had property, then like if you pay taxes, things like that. But now it became more open to guys. And I'm sorry, girls, you guys won't be able to vote until uh, in Britain it was 1918 that women had the right to vote. Um, in the United States it was in 1920. So again, sorry, ladies. Uh, in the 1850s and 1860s. There was a social and political reform that was done, okay, because the talk of revolution, the actions were building up again, and then basically Britain said, okay, um, let's change things up, let's think, get, let more people, you know, tell us what um, they need, you know, uh, whether it's better roads, better education, better health, whatever it may be, okay, so the political scheme uh, were more open to everyone. People could put get their voice in there, right? Now, there was one group that said, "No, we don't. We don't like what's going on," and that was Irish, the Irish people. And there was an Irish nationalist movement that was going on because thing is, you have to remember, Britain controlled Ireland, and Ireland was like, "We're grown people. We can take care of ourselves." You know, yeah, we can, we'll be loyal and all that stuff because you, you own us, but let us handle our own stuff. And Britain's like, nah, nah, you know. And, and the thing is, too, due to the economic growth of the middle class, um, the idea of revolution was in the back burner. All right. And the people with power realized this, like, you know what? If, when we give them more money, they're happier. And when they're happier, the thought of taking over, kicking us, the powerful people, out, they don't even think about it. So that's when the wages of workers really started to rise up a bit. Not enough to make them filthy rich, but just enough to get them by comfortably, you know, and so that the powerful rich people stayed that way. And that the poor people maybe came up a little bit, but nothing to where the rich and powerful is. All right. All right. So here's your final question. What do you think is more important? Money or your freedoms? Now, explain to you, explain this to me. All right. Which, why do you believe this one to be more important? Okay. And in this scenario, don't be like, oh, well, I can buy my freedom if I have a lot of money. No, in this scenario, you can't. It's either money or freedom. Which one's going to be? Okay, 
So which one to you is more important? And there's a writing prompt at the bottom. I believe that money, freedoms, is more important because, and explain yourself. Okay, so that's the end of this video. Uh, hopefully you learned something new. Um, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Right. So I'll see you guys later. You guys have a good day. Take care. Be safe.